Yo, what's up squad? Welcome back into the channel. If it is your first time joining us, my name is Kyle Meshna. I am a landscape photographer and filmmaker based here in San Francisco, California. And today we're bringing you a quick tutorial on adding a sun flare in Photoshop. Let's get into it. All right, now I know I said the P word, Photoshop, and a lot of people freak out when they hear the word Photoshop. Most people like to stick to Lightroom. Photoshop seems a little bit daunting and scary, but I promise we're just gonna stick with this one simple thing. It's only gonna be two layers, so we're gonna keep it pretty simple. And the idea here is that this is a new tool belt that you will add to your Photoshop toolkit that you can bust out whenever you see fit. And we're just gonna keep on adding additional tools to that tool belt as we go along to help you up your Photoshop game, slowly but surely over time. Okay, so let's jump into Photoshop. I don't know why everyone always says jumping into Photoshop. I haven't jumped, I'm still sitting here. Maybe you're super excited for Photoshop and you've jumped out of your seat. If you have, great, but we haven't gotten started yet. So sit back down, we're going into Photoshop. Here we are. This is the way that I have imported the image. I've done a few basic adjustments within Lightroom, this is the background layer that I've opened up in Photoshop. You'll notice that there are a bunch of folders up here as well. Uh, let's not take too much attention to those. I have already posted this photo on my Instagram feed. So this is the final edit itself is in within all of these folders. What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna jump ahead to the part where I add the sun flare because that's the part that we're focusing on for this tutorial. The first thing that I did when I was approaching this photo real quickly was I just wanted to eliminate some of the distracting parts of the photo itself. So I added some contrast. I removed some of the distracting parts. I did a little bit of dodging and burning to draw your, your eye into the lines and the colors and all that. This is the kind of initial Photoshop edit. We can go into that at another point, uh, but for now, I really wanna focus on the sun flare itself. So to make things a little bit easier to read, I'm just gonna kind of get rid of this stuff. I am going to duplicate the background layer. You can do this by hitting Command J on your keyboard. You have a background copy. I'm going to then select that and this kind of clean up dodge and burn stuff, bring that all the way to the top. So now everything else under here can just go and hide. Now the next thing that we're gonna do is we're gonna add our sun flare. The first thing that we're gonna to wanna to do is whenever we're adding light or adding sun or changing the sky uh, or manipulating a photo in any way, or really kind of the, the main basis of all photo editing is to understand where light is coming from or where it should be coming from and where you want to add it to. So it's first we want to examine the image. We want to make sure that this is re as realistic as possible. So it should have light coming from the correct light source, the correct direction. If we look at this photo, we can see that it's coming this direction. We have, we can see this because there's shadows being cast on the left side of the bridge. There's some small amount of light hitting the right side of these buildings here. So we know that the sun is coming from top right to bottom left. So we wanna add color and add light in the same direction. The way that we're going to add the color in a way that naturally resembles the sun is we're going to add a gradient. So the way that we'll do this, it will go layer, new fill layer, gradient. We can name this gradient color. Doesn't really matter what you name it, but that's what I'll name it for you. So you notice this has just created a white gradient from top, from bottom to top. What we we'll wanna do is we'll want to double click this and within our gradient editor, we'll want to recreate the effect of the sun. So what color is the sun? Basically it's warm and orange, but beyond that, it also starts a little bit brighter because the center of the sun is a little bit hotter. So we want to add a bright yellow to start, somewhere around there. And the center of the sun is kind of that white hot. So we want to have some extra space for it here. And then we'll just click and we'll add a slightly darker yellow to it. Somewhere around there. -ish. We'll add one more that is again, a little bit oranger and a little bit darker. And the last one that I like to add is kind of more of a bluish grayish color. And that would be kind of where our sky would typically fall. So this here is what our gradient is going to look like. Okay, so cool, Kyle, that looks gross. And you're right, it does look gross. The way that we fix that is it, the sun obviously is not coming from the bottom to the top. It's coming from the top to the bottom and it's not doing so linearly, it's coming straight at us, so it's gonna be a radial. So we're gonna change the style from linear to radial. And you'll see already, 
that kind of looks like a sun. So we'll click okay. Obviously we don't want the sun coming out of the van. We want the sun coming out of this top corner. What we'll do is we'll double click on the gradient. You can do this at any time. Double click on the gradient and move it up to where we want the light to be coming from. Let's leave it right about there. So we want the light coming this way. Uh, also, it's a little bit too big, so I think we're gonna scale it down to around 75-ish or so. 75 looks good. The other thing now we'll want to do is change the blend mode. Now the blend mode is how this layer is processed versus the other layers. For this one, we don't want it to be set to normal, we want it to set to hard light. We could either set it to hard light or soft light depending on the look you want to go for. Um, for this one in particular, I'm gonna use hard light because it wants it to be a little bit more vibrant and bright. If you use soft light, you'll notice it kind of just muddies up the building. That's just for this image, but you can try it out and see which one works for whatever image you're working with. So for this one, we're gonna go with hard light. That's already pretty decent. We can definitely do better, however. And the way that we're gonna do better is we're actually going to add that lens flare itself. So we'll go ahead and create a new layer. And within this layer, we want to fill it with black. So we'll go edit, fill, and we'll fill with black. Boom. What we wanna do here is we want to, I'm gonna drop the opacity just so I can see where we're coming from. On this black layer, we will go to filter, render, lens flare. Look at that, they got one for us. There's a few different ones that you can choose from. For this one, I like the 50 to 300 millimeter zoom lens. So it's creating this fake lens flare for us. We're gonna wanna put it again where we want the lens flare to come from. Let's put it right there. Boom, the lens flare is coming from right behind the building. To get rid of this black part, we will change the blend mode from normal to screen. What screen does is it ignores all of the black parts. Let's bring back up the opacity. Now we could, again, we could call it quits here. We could say that this is a pretty good image. This is looking pretty sweet. I'm gonna say that we do one more thing. I don't like personally how intense these are. This is a pretty general rule of thumb for all things Photoshop is start overdone and then pare back a little bit. So what we can do here is we can erase a little bit of what we've done. The way that we do that is with a layer mask. So if we select this little button here, that creates a new layer mask. And we hit B or click on the brush tool. That will allow for us to paint away the parts that we don't want. So white is for keeping, black is for painting away. So I am going to increase the size of my brush a little bit. Uh, I wanna have a soft brush. So we'll have a nice soft brush here. And I want the flow to be pretty low, probably like eight or so percent. And what I'm gonna do is just with this light brush, I'm just gonna kind of brush away some of this just to make it a little bit less obvious. So it looks a little less rendered in Photoshop, if you will. And there we go. So the before and after of our lens flare effect. If we group these together, we can turn it off and on to see what we've done. One thing that we can also do here is this gradient is a little bit too bright. So if we did want to tone it down just a little bit, we can always change the opacity of one individual layer. If we just go ahead and very slightly decrease or increase that opacity, it will make it a little bit less pronounced. So there are certainly other things that I've done to this image that we've skipped over. But again, the point of this was to teach you how to do the lens flare. This is that tool that we're talking about for the Photoshop tool belt. We'll be adding many more tools to that Photoshop tool belt in the coming episodes. So if you did find this one helpful, I would appreciate it if you played thumb or with like button. It definitely helps a lot. Add some additional things that you'd like to learn, be it Photoshop, Lightroom, whatever, in the comments below, and we'll get to one of those in the next video. Subscribe if that's not something you've done already, and I'll see you guys in the next one. I guess we gotta call it the tool belt now. The Photoshop tool belt. You guys like these shirts? I only wear black shirts, but this one's got the beige shooters on it, so, you know, obviously.